How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation. It's time to get that imagination all excited. It's time to get into some creativity, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Alan Lee. If you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. He is probably uh, most well known for his work uh, in fantasy illustration, and mainly his work with uh, Tolkien and Lord of the Rings series. But he's also done a uh, slew of other beautiful and really imaginative illustration work and I just love his stuff I think he's got some really lovely lovely design work and such a wonderful imagination that he brings to life in a really um, lovely lovely style I love this end that he did it's got such fun character I love how he didn't really do any sort of back of the head but just went right with it um, just really creative some more uh, just orcs I believe on these ones like I said, he's, he's got a, a beautiful style, and any sort of fantasy artwork I'm, I find myself drawn to, and he's just another um, great example of, of beautifully uh, rendered, uh, top-notch fantasy art, for sure. So definitely check out more of his stuff. I will uh, throw a link in the description below. Uh, this is another one that I found of his that I just love. Just the posing, um, the feel of it. You can, I'm really drawn to kind of the, the more scratchy style of illustration. I don't mean scratchy, but uh, um, I guess rough would be the, the term terminology there. But you can tell like there's still some some outlining uh, scribbliness to that, and just the the rendering style. I like that there's a little bit of chaos um, behind it while still showing a high level of sophistication in the work as well. And again, great the weights distributed wonderfully there's some power and uh, kind of ominousness in the posing and uh, angle and everything just love that piece but I want to share a quote with you guys from him and he said uh, I'm frequently thinking ahead when I'm working on an illustration when it's going well I want to be able to carry the ideas and momentum straight into the next picture or series of illustrations but as soon as I finish one I find myself at the bottom of the hill again with all the research and other preparatory work ahead of me before I can get back into the flow. And I think that's totally true. Um, just for an, an example, yesterday um, I was working for a while uh, and start, started to kind of feel warmed up and, and ready to go on to uh, the next part of my work. And uh, then I, I was pulled away and, and had to go deal with some real life stuff for a couple of hours and then got back in. And then, you know, sitting down, trying to get everything in line, trying to get warmed up again. And then finally was able to get to a good spot, you know, about an hour or so into work and then was pulled away again. And it was just, uh, I was able to get through all of my, my, my work yesterday, but, but there's definitely um, a different dynamic when you have to almost feel like you're, you're restarting over and over and over again. And you can't really hit that. I guess it would be kind of the the REM sleep of uh, creativeness, uh, where you know you have your if, if you take a nap or if you're familiar with if you're familiar with sleeping. That's uh, probably the most inane sentence I've ever said. Um, but if you're familiar uh, with the the process of how your body works when you're sleeping, um, you have a, a low rest state where you're still um, can be easily woken up and your body's not fully in the, the deep sleep yet and then you hit that deep sleep and then you you know come out of it and there's kind of that little bit of cycle and I think the creative process is kind of the same way you start off and you're kind of kind of into it and you're kind of still thinking about you know whatever's going on in your day or whatever you kind of want to do with this piece and there's a little bit of um, kind of the two parts of your brain working and then if you uh, have, have worked long enough and have developed something uh, and can get into that, that deeper state where you just are kind of hyper-focused on what you're doing and you're just in that zone and you can kind of ignore everything around you. And then, you know, some you'll hear something or somebody will be talking about something or you'll start thinking about a different idea and you'll start to get pulled out of that. And I think that's that, that deep state and, uh, you know, it'd be nice to just be able to sit down at uh, the studio or sit down in front of the mic or, or wherever it is that you guys are creative in front of the easel or, or whatever it is and just hit that right away but I think there's there's definitely that flow and it's time to get you know it, it's, it's uh, it takes time to get there and 
and I think that's uh, kind of what, what he's talking about here. And it would be, you know, it'd be wonderful if you, every time you sat down, you're just instantly in there and you can run with that. But I think it depends on, you know, your your physical state. If you got a cold, if you've got a headache, you know, if there's um, kind of an emotional state as well, or, or spiritual, or however you want to describe it, where if your frustrations and you're bringing that to your work, it's definitely going to affect it. And uh, I think it's important to try and try and get a good kind of calm balance of that stuff or at least get a way that you can um, focus your head to not focus on that stuff and stay in there but anyways i'm rambling let's go ahead and get into some animation um wonderful stuff and obviously uh at least gets my uh creative processes thinking um from beautiful work of alan lee and that wonderful quote um, but i did want to uh get into some animation here and this is the great dane rig it's a free rig you can grab over at creative crash and if you're not familiar with what we'll be doing for the rest of the video so we give ourselves 48 frames, it's two seconds of animation. I go off and I uh, find a rig that I've never used before that's a free resource for you guys to play around with as well. And we kind of go from there. A little bit of kind of over the shoulder, just hang out with me while I animate. A little bit of instruction or guidance or talk it through the process or uh, anything kind of revolved around creativity or using that imagination is try to what, what I uh, focus on for these videos. Um, but the main goal is to hopefully encourage you guys and inspire you to go off and create something really unique and wonderful and just uh, truly uh, true to yourself and using that, that wonderful imagination that you have um, each and every day and that hopefully you continue to push yourself in whatever field that is to get better and to get faster and to get stronger and uh, yeah so let's go ahead and get into some animation so I think um, yesterday's video ended up being almost an hour and I still almost wanted to do another hour with it before I was even ready to call it but that being said uh, I think today we're just gonna kind of do a cycle of a, a little bit of a personality animal walk for this one just something that's um, I'm not saying it's easy but something that I know that shouldn't take um, an hour or uh, two hours to, to, to do like yesterday's so I try to kind of balance it out there a little bit here as well Now the attitude I'm kind of thinking for this one is kind of a energetic or but I think I might have to so I do that which I almost want to do there's some deformation there so I think I'm gonna have to angle that down a little bit more because I just don't like that and then we'll angle the head up here or not I just want to create a good um, starting pose, a good fun, I said kind of energetic, happy little starting pose. I want to do a lot of um, bounciness in the uh, buttoxial region, which is the uh, correct terminology, just in case you're wondering. It is buttoxial. That's um, get out your uh, Grey's Anatomy uh, book and look that up. And you'll find, as always, that I use the correct terminology and the correct phrasing for everything that I say. I never, uh, no, that's absolutely not true. You know that by now. If you watched any one of my, uh, any one of the videos, um, you guys are awesome and I love you lots. But you know that I'm a little ridiculous sometimes too. So let's go ahead and I want that neck to be a little bit better. But it doesn't seem like we have much control over these guys. What about? That's what we gotta do, then that's what we gotta do. And maybe we could drop that down a little bit more here. Still wanna try and keep um, the uh, consistency of the neck to have, not have too much warble in there. But I think that'll work for, some, for starters here. Let's go ahead and splay the feet out a little bit and why. And I think I want more um, to X 
accentuate the sway and up and down on the um, tail end and have some more pronounced and uppity steps on the front. That's kind of, and the rest of it will be fairly vanilla. Um, that's what I'm thinking for this walk. Let's go ahead and push that one forward a little bit more. This one, we'll bring it back a little bit. And we'll kind of go from there. And I think I'm gonna do a cycle again, um, I think just since Yesterday's video went so long, kind of feeling a little, a little, a little bit like I need some, some, uh, I don't know, never mind. Okay, yeah, that feels pretty good. Again, we could probably straighten out that tail and really do it, but I think I like having a little bit there. So, let's see, do we have any facial controllers here? doesn't appear like it. I was thinking that I might be able to do something with the jaw or anything here. Let's see, is there one in here? No. Okay. So let's make sure we just have our um, nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and polygons selected. Let's go ahead and grab everything, set our frame range from 0 to 48. We'll go ahead and save our frame one more time. And go ahead and grab everything, and we'll go ahead and set our first key. And let's go ahead and go to uh, frame 12. Let's grab opposite or diagonal uh, foot here and foot there, move those forward, and then we'll grab these ones here, and we'll go ahead and move those back. Obviously they're not perfect yet. I don't know if I exactly like this so far, but I kind of want to look at it and see what I get. Okay, I think that this one needs, these two need to be a little more forward. Just didn't feel like there's enough movement on that side of the that feels a little more even, like there's enough movement between the two sides. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save that. Again, let's just go ahead and grab all of the feet again, and we're just gonna go back to those uh, main keys that we started off, and we're just gonna hit S on our keyboard again, just to make sure they're locked in. And uh, chances are you guys already know all of this stuff, because uh, you're amazing and wonderful animators. So sometimes I just give out or talk through the basics, just in case it's your first time ever watching you're still new and learning. I like to try and have a little bit of discussion for people who've been doing this for a couple of years and uh, people who are just starting out as well. And hopefully we talk about some concepts that, um, that are thought provoking or at least interesting to people who've been doing this for way longer than even I have as well. Let's do a little bit up and down there. Let's see how this feels. Okay, maybe a little less up and down. Okay. I feel like that hit, so let's see. I 
know, I want to do some extra movement throughout there. So let's figure out how we're going to do that. Okay, I think we're going to have to really accentuate that more. So let's bring it. now and again we still have tons of steps to go but this is something that I kind of wanted to try and build in towards the early phases here so let's go ahead and look at it now so far so let's keep tweaking it Which we can always offset and everything, so you want a little bit of that in there, but not a ton. Yeah, let's look at transient lines. Maybe we'll do this instead. Nah. <laughs> Obviously we're going to have to do something about the middle because the middle is getting a little deformed while we're going through this. So let's see how we want to do it here. Okay, we need to do more up 
probably going to have to tone this down a little bit more, but it's starting to feel a little bit better now. Okay, yeah, it's too busy overall already, and we still have more stuff to do, so let's really... start building in our, um, our positions on the feet here. Let's, let's raise those up. And again, we're going to tweak these so there's some different posing and heights and everything. But I just want to start building it somewhere. And let's go to the other side. And we'll raise it up there. start looking at that now. I think we could do a little more just overall up and down in the body. So let's just go ahead and do that. This one, and that should go up, and down, up, and down, up, down, up, and back again. So let's see how that feels. Yeah, it feels off. Let's move it uh, forward to three. <laughs> that feels a little better. It's probably over exaggerated now. Probably. Okay, it is. Uh, so let's scale it back. And then pop in a key there. tone down everything still feels just a little too busy I do like the contrast from uh, you know slow small movement in the head and busier towards the back end but I feel like it's just too much so let's scale it back here kind of even it out as we go here so they should be doing that on camera And again, if uh, you guys do uh, enjoy what we're doing here, uh, definitely subscribe to the channel and throw any sort of likes or you can, uh, if you ever need contact or an extra set of eyes on something or just some encouragement in your art day, don't hesitate to shoot me a message here on YouTube or uh, link to, uh, I always have uh, more of my social media links down in the comments as well. And if you guys are looking for that as well, and let's go ahead and do a little bit less up and down in the back end here. So let's just go ahead and pull that down a little bit more. Just felt like it's a little too much. And I think I am going to take the Translate Z's here and just not have them kick out so much.
the sixes and circle on twelves there. Thank you, that. 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 And that. And here. There. And there's the king. Okay. Um, let's minimize that a little bit more. Maybe I could loosen up the neck a little bit here. to the neck here. I need to see that now. I think we could probably amp up the front a bit, a little bit more. And let's watch it now. There we go, just so we get a little bit of looseness in there. needs to be pushed forward a little bit more. Yeah, it feels a little bit more, it's a little bit snapping into too much of a straight in the back, which is fine, but with the amount of time that we have to really work through this thing, we don't have a lot of time to get into knees and more of the stuff on the ones that I would normally do in a more polished shot. Let's go ahead and take the height of the back steps and let's minimize that some here. Kind of even it out a little bit more here too. It doesn't have to be exactly even, but something that's a little more uniform and then we'll lower those steps a lot here. And let's take the um, translation here and let's push that over the planted foot there. some of that twist and splay in the body that we want. And this is probably too much. We'll scale it back, but let's look at it. Alright, feels like it's still too much in the front, so let's take the um, Translate X and get in. Just minimize that a lot here. even out the back so that we're not favoring the left or the right really but kind of going down the middle because you see like right here that was too too far pushed so let's scale it back here and I do want the back to feel more loose and more floppy than the front so I'm gonna let it be more exaggerated in the front but not too much and let's go ahead and do a little bit of rotating C here and there Y to favor that 
front planted paw. Let's look at both the rotate uh, Y and the Z and find a good middle ground for all of our keys here. Let me kind of even up this one a little bit better. It's still pretty close, uh, just getting a little bit better. Now let's do a similar thing in the front. So I want to do a little bit of rotate uh, whoop, just the Z, not the Z and the Y. Tilt into that planted foot there. And then tilt into that planted foot there, there, there. So let's see what about. Okay, let's clean that up. And again, I'm fine with having a minimal front end and a more exaggerated back end. That was one of the things we talked about in the beginning on wanting to uh, push. And let's look at our rotate Y. And then we'll again rotate to favor the front um, push. I don't want a lot of this because it's going to get into the head, so I'm going to probably tone that down more or offset it in the head as well. And let's even that out there as well. And I'm going to minimize that to not very much at all. Probably too exaggerated for a tail, but we'll see what we like. That way. Okay. And this is too fast. I think I need this only to be on 12, so on 6 is though. And 12 frames from that would be 15, so go there. over to 27 and I'll swing the other side and 12 frames from that would be 39 and swing back I was doing that on sixes and I only need that to go on 12 so let's make sure we get that right so let's see here So you get kind of a nice infinity symbol swing on that tail. And uh, let's even that out a little bit more. Let's see here. break up that tail a little bit more as we go, but I think I want to focus on the feet a little bit more right now. So let's vary these feet a little bit. Let's go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and toe drag. Just uh, drag that foot a little bit there. Lift it up here. And zero it out there. And let's get the rotate X again. Doing that about two frames. 
Okay, and I'll go three frames here, and we'll go ahead and drag that foot. Oh, wrong one. Drag it there. Okay, we did one frame before. Okay. So we have the foot dragging lifts up one frame before the contact and then slams down two frames after the contact. So let's see that. Okay, now let's do the same on this foot here. So I'll go ahead and drag there. One frame before, flip it up. Two frames. so we can get that nice uh, loop there. Okay, all right. Actually, I'll pull that a little bit higher. So there's still that little bit down and up between the loop cycle there. So let's go ahead and watch that now. We're just looking at the front paws and how we have those kind of dragging. They're a little more precisely placed there. Feels a little better. And let's look at the back feet. I'm just going to go six and drag it there. Twelve, we'll lift it up. And no. I'll drag it back there. Lift it up. And that way we have some different timing and different posing from our front steps to our back steps. Okay, let's look at the other one. And again, we'll go ahead and go here. We'll drag that foot back right in the middle. Go to the contact, lift it up. Two frames, drop it down. Feels pretty good. The only thing that's really sticking out to me is the up and down in the um, chest itself. Feels a little too dead. So maybe we'll bring it down a little bit here. Let's see. Yeah, that way we get still a little bit of bounce in there. I knew there was some before, obviously, but it just wasn't feeling like there was enough there. I feel like that's working pretty well, so let's go ahead and save our file here. Just make sure we're actually still recording, and we are. All right, and let's look at our tail. So let's grab this guy, and we'll just make that on three, right? Okay. We'll grab the bottom two rungs, and we'll go through. frames later so 15 we're just kind of accentuating the sway that we already have in the tail there and then we'll go back to zero so let's see all right and let's just kind of even that out a little bit and this is pretty much just reinforcing the movement we already have on the base of the tail here it's just adding a little bit to the next two rungs down below and then for the next part, I'm going to grab these two. And I'm going to do those on six. So they're going to add a little level of delay even there to kind of. And then that would be 12 frames from that, which would be 18. And then swing out there. And that'll allow the tail to kind of kick a little bit. A little bit of breaking of the tail to have it swing out to those different directions. And let's go ahead and 
Merci à, merci. way here. I kind of want to see how that will feel. Yeah, let's try doing it the opposite way here. So let's swing out at the extremes and let's see how that feels. Let's delay it maybe two frames. them a little bit more and add some more break because I feel like it's not loose enough. I think the movement's there but I feel like it feels a little stiff throughout the middle here so I'm going to take these portions and exaggerate them after having minimized the bottom movement here. Let's see how that feels. Too bad we don't have any ear controllers or any of that stuff. Just look at it in there for a little bit. I really love some facial controllers in this rig, but I think overall it works pretty good. We got the um, more prominent front steps and uh, more bouncy back end to that walk, which were two of the things that we wanted to uh, try and get in there to add some personality to this walk, and I think we did that and got that pretty successfully. So again, it'd be great if there was um, something where we can move the jaw off, but I don't see any controllers on there, and it doesn't look like there's an option for those. So I think we'll have to do without that for today. That'd be a fun way to push this animation, I think, to the next level too as well as getting some movement in those ears and maybe like a blink. We could even waggle the tongue or something too. Um, but overall, I feel like that works pretty good. Uh, there's something that I was thinking I wanted to do before that, and that was let's go ahead and grab everything. And we'll go to our graph editor, and we'll just take that last pose, and we'll just go ahead and push it one frame over. It's not going to be something that we show, but that way we get a little bit of movement from the end of the loop to the beginning of the next loop and it doesn't feel like it holds for two frames which kind of helps 
make it feel a little bit less like there's a seam from when the animation ends to when it goes again. All right, so let's go ahead and turn our nerve curves off. Let's go ahead and grab uh, this bottom plane here and let's scale it over in Z a little bit more. And let's angle this a tiny bit more. So let's go ahead and uh, create a new perspective. I kind of like the camera angle we got going uh, for our, our play blast here. And let's go ahead and create a polygon primitives. Let's go do another cube here. Kind of lift that up. We'll assign a new material on there just so we get a different background. And we'll put a Lambert on there and give us a different color here. Let's do a little bit of a, do a muted blue. Let's go ahead and push it back further. And we'll scale it up here as well. Switch back. That feels a little better. Just so it's something a little bit different than the normal coloring that we have in the background. Let's take a look back at where we started. We were looking at the beautiful work of uh, Alan Lee, and he said, I'm frequently thinking ahead when I'm working on an illustration. When it's going well, I want to be able to carry the ideas and momentum straight onto the next picture or series of illustrations. But as soon as I finish one, I find myself at the bottom of the hill again with all the research and all the other prep work ahead of me before I can get back into the flow. And it's great to hear um, people who are, who are wonderfully successful and completely creative talk about each and every project is a new hill to climb and new obstacles to overcome and uh, all the work it takes to get into that place where it just flows and you're just working on the next step and the next step and the next step and you're not thinking about all the 50 million other things that are going on in your life um, i love you guys lots thanks again for uh liking and subscribing um, you guys are just amazing and i'm trying to make sure that i uh, go through and at least um, give you some encouragement on each one of your pages as you guys subscribe. I, I'm getting through there. I think I've, I've done probably about 60 or 70 of you. But I'm going to get to every one of you because I want you to know how much you mean to me and how wonderful you are and how amazing and creative you are and how much potential you have. Um, so go out there and push yourself each and every day. Create something new today. And uh, feel free to, in the comments down below, link to any amazing stuff you guys come up with happy to give you some promotion or encouragement or thumbs up or a second set of eyes or whatever I can do to, to help you guys as well. And uh, I think that'll do it for today. So keep being awesome and we'll see you for some more animation tomorrow.